Hello friends, my name is Christy Rice and I am here with you again. We are live right now and I always like to first and foremost say hello to Team Replay because uh, the replays of these lives are so important and I am here for you and ask your questions and um, be part, as much a part of this live uh, on the replay as you would like and know that we will get into comments and answer those questions. So today is really exciting. This is kind of like you know, a holiday party. I am, I'm doing these lives for two weeks. So tons of content and yes, we're talking about holiday and gifting, but ultimately, and most importantly, we are talking about, you know, we're step-by-step -step painting. We are today really excitedly talking about how to finish a painting. And I think this is such a, um, underserved topic. So, you know, let me paint a picture. Ha ha ha. <laughs> you know, we, um, we've been working on a piece, maybe several pieces, and they're all to a stage where they're near complete. At least we think so in our minds, but not quite there. And we put them off to the side. At least this is me. I'm describing my own um, habits. We put them off to the side and we return at some point. Hello, everyone. I want to say hello. Um, uh, to Susie Q. So we've got Anka, we've got Carrie Ann. Hello. I'm reading from far away. Tiffany. Hello. Hello. Just making sure everyone can hear me. Okay. Please let me know if there's any issues. Um, hello. Hello, Monique. Thank you for being here. So, you know, we have this near complete piece of artwork, right? And I have a whole pile of them here. And so what in the world, how do we finish them? How do we not ruin them? How do we not mess it up? Um, hello, Nancy. Hello, Julie, Cassandra. Hello, hello, yay. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the sound check. <laughs> I do not have Kelly today. I actually don't have anyone helping me today. So, um, you know, we're gonna see how it goes. <laughs> So today I'm going to be showing you a collection of paintings. Um, I have mentioned that once a year I do release my artwork. I, I offer up my studio uh, artwork. Basically, it's the pieces that I've been working on all year long, the pieces that uh, I have begun as part of a YouTube tutorial or a TikTok uh, video or, you know, and just haven't fully finished. Um, and so I finish those up and I offer them for sale and they make incredible gifts um, and for yourself or for others. And so that's gonna be starting uh, today and I'm so excited. But most importantly, uh, I wanna talk about the thought process that I go through um, and how I walk my creative brain through this kind of like tentative time in a painting's life cycle. I mean, would you agree? Head into comments and let me know um, um, thank you, Monique. Thank you. I did get my hair colored recently and I felt like I needed a little something, something. So I got a little pink, a little rose gold, you know, cause rose gold. <laughs> Anywho, um, I think the wrapping up a painting can be uh, a really nerve wracking time because I mentioned a little bit earlier, like you don't, um, you don't want to screw it up. Right. Um, Thank you, PJ. That that is so cool. I'm glad you feel that way because I I feel that way. I feel like I'm speaking to individuals, you know, as well as the community. So it means the world to me that you said that. Thank you so much, um, Olga. Thank you so much for joining us. Really, so so happy that you're here. Um, so I I thought it would be super helpful to just really kind of like tear the bandaid off tear the, the mystery away from this, this final stage of our painting journey. And so let's get to it. I'm going to just head on down to the painting table and we're just going to get into it. Going to review these pieces. Um, I have a couple of palettes. Sorry for my chair creaking. It's, it's just time. It's time for a new chair. Um, we're just going to take a look at these pieces. I'm going to go through a, a couple of these and, and just talk about what I'm thinking. And this is a great way to start. Um, if you have uh, several paintings that you feel need uh, to be completed, it's great to look at them as a whole, actually. I love doing that. It's a way to kind of just reset your brain. 
and and so for example this piece i uh, my initial instinct is to definitely keep it um this square format i'm looking at things like you know do i want to erase some of the pencil the ghost pencil lines and do i want to just continue it out to the edges right or am i going to keep it um am i going to kind of create a full-blown pattern here and go all out to the edges full bleed or am i going to just my my initial thought is how interesting would it be to just maybe continue something here that runs off the page and maybe extend something here but not quite off the page i think that would create some lovely balance and then something up here to continue off the page to you know ground this kind of floating composition a little bit but not make it feel too full um so anywho that's the kind of thinking so that's where i'm at with this one here's a piece and honestly like she looks pretty done i can't even remember which side is is up no this is correct um my only thought here is that i really love the fluorescent so i might do and i i have a little boo-boo here i have a little fluorescent spot here that just went rogue so i am probably going to do some spatter here to make that look intentional some spatter over here i also have a little stain here of like a, a lizard and crimson type pigment so i'm probably going to do some heavier spatter and maybe some more of this sketching here so friends if you're just joining us we are chatting about how to finish a painting how to deal with the issues that come up um and you know how to how to wrap it up confidently and um hey mary hey laura um i need a, i need to fund me for a new chair oh good lord um i know christine needs to just get off her butt and stop being ridiculous and just get a new daggone chair um is what the problem is i'm just being ridiculous um i'm like this chair shouldn't be breaking already but you know it is what it is. So anyway, um, hey, Laura, I've got so many Laura's right now. Holy moly. Love it. Um, so and just as a reminder, if you are just joining in, we're talking about finishing paintings, I'm going to be finishing some of these paintings. And then um, as the, the next few weeks go on, these paintings are going to pop up in um, christyrice.com, the holiday shop um, for your gift buying um, indulgences if you will uh and so friends i have been painting ornaments for the last few days and again team replay uh stick with us if you're watching this like in july and you're like what just stick with us there's so much good content coming up so when you hear me talking about christmas ornaments you know just like tune me out for a minute just just stay with us though um ornaments friends i have a little surprise for my youtube viewers i have a discount code for any ornaments that are still uh in the shop you're going to get 30% off today only. That's going to go for, to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time today only. Are you ready for the discount code? If you have one that you've been eyeing up, now is the time to do it. And the discount code is JOY, all caps, ONE. JOY, ONE. Go ahead and get your favorite ornament that you've been eyeing up. Because, friends, I know these times are crazy. Um, I know that we all have a lot on our plate getting all those gift spot if that is what you celebrate and so i want to do what i can um you know as an artist <laughs> and as someone who sure needs to run a business and support her team but also knowing that um i can do my part in making things uh, more accessible so uh 30 off the ornaments i've been painting this week honestly i think this piece is done i don't think i'm going to touch her i'm going to put her in the probably done pile over here um, but I do love her. Um, so joy one friends, joy one for ornaments. You're going to get, oh, it's the digit one. I'm so sorry. It's joy, J O Y digit one. So the actual number one joy one, um, friends, all of these paintings, you might be wondering if you are thinking about investing in my work or anyone's work, um, have fluorescent, um, all of my pieces, because I do use fluorescents often. So my originals are finished with a UV protectant and I, we do recommend that they be put under UV glass, um, which honestly these days is super easy to find. Even if you're not going to get them custom framed, you can find UV glass in Michael's with um, just kind of ready-made framing supplies. 
Um, so, okay, let's take a look at this one. Actually, you know what? I want to go back to this one. So a couple of things that I think about when I'm finishing a, a painting, I have to get my notes. I have notes. I have notes, friends. I prepare for these lives, just like I, I write scripts for all my videos here. Um, so I think about composition number one, the principles of composition, balance, form, repetition, things like that. Um, I often paint these little like floating compositions and that's how I start a painting. But then as I'm finishing a painting, I have to think about, you know, as we were talking about this, I have to think about how to like not make it float, but in an interesting way, right? Uh, so with composition, I think about things like balance is, is something making the painting top heavy or too bottom heavy. I mean, we typically do, compositionally speaking, want a little bit of visual heaviness towards the bottom. It helps ground the piece, right? Um, I'm going to go side by side here again. So uh, are there any colors? I think about color theory. Um, now, I don't want you to like get freaked out, but I, I think about color theory casually, usually. Um, are there colors that need a little bit more of a presence? You know, is there one color that's like screaming? Like, for example, there's actually a color right here that I think is a little odd because it's more purple. And I feel like I'm probably going to want to put a little bit of that in maybe two other places to kind of balance and create like a triangle, you know, kind of like help the eye move through here. Because right now my eye is going to this oddball and I'm thinking... Yeah, that's just odd. That's not where I want my eye to sit, right? And I think about edits. Do I want to drastically change the direction of a piece? You know, for example, this piece is quite delicate. Uh, there's a lot of small marks, small strokes, press and lift type strokes, uh, combined with some sketchy linear strokes. Do I want to bring in a ton of bold, dark, juicy, saturated strokes to up the contrast of this piece? Or do I want to keep it delicate? And for me, the answer is keep it delicate. So great questions to ask yourself. This piece, I love this. I hope this goes to a good home. But I hope somebody buys this because it's near and dear to my heart. Honestly, they all are. But this piece was uh, from a video, and I will actually link this video below talking about a, a rule in watercolor that I break all the time. And that is, and friends, please stick around. I am going to paint today. I'm not going to just wax poetic about painting decisions. I'm going to paint. But anyway, this piece was uh, talking about breaking a rule in watercolor, that rule being starting light, light layers, and then building up intensity. And this one was the opposite. I, I talked about going all in with dark right away. Uh, so I love, love, love this piece. Thank you, friends, so much. Thank you, Dawn. I know I love the neon yellow. It's so fun. Hello, uh, Natasha from the Netherlands. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here and being part of the community here. So much, friends. If you are enjoying this session, please do give the video a boop. That's a thumbs up. That's a like. Um, it really, really helps my channel. It helps others find the live while we are live. But most importantly, once this video goes into the archives, into my portfolio, into my collection on this channel, it really helps the algorithm find others like you that need more joy. And so we want to build this community and uh, I appreciate your help with that. So boop, boop. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so I think about composition balance. I think about, is my eye going somewhere that is just ridiculous and I don't want my eye to go? Um, I think about like, this is a big piece. This is like a nine by 13. Do I want to continue this out, fill the whole nine by 13? This one I'm kind of feeling like I do um, because I, this, what's happening here so far in, in my feeling, in my belief, is quite strong compositionally. Um, it's a little odd. It's it's not a traditional composition. There, there are traditional reasons that this shouldn't be working, um, but it is, number one, the big focal point is kind of at the top, which typically could make things feel quite off-center and out of balance and almost top-heavy, like something was going to tumble on you, which creates kind of like a sense of distress in a painting. Um, uh, thank you so much, Toby. Thank you so much. Um, 
Yes, fill it up, Miriam says. So, okay, yeah. But the reason this is working, in my opinion, in my experience, is there's some really strong, bold, cascading moments happening here that are like rushing at you visually and really help balance out this top heavy feel. So anyway, this might be a piece that I work on today. I'm gonna pop that over in the, we need to do this today pile maybe. Um, but honestly, this piece is gonna take a little while. So we'll see, we'll see how far we get. Um, so thinking about color, thinking about, um, this is a very warm piece. And the, the overwhelming warm, I've got the pinks, I've got the reds, I've got fuchsias, um, even the greens, friends, are warm. These greens have a lot of red mixed into them, right? So this piece, I feel like it needs some balance. And it does have balance. The reds are being balanced by, um, by the greens, but remember, the greens are warm. So... The blues are helping. I almost feel like uh, some purple might help this a lot. Um, even some white touches just to brighten things a little bit. Um, not even brighten, but add some just like contrast and sparkle, not an actual literal sparkle, but that might be helpful. So friends, you need to have conversations with yourself when you're thinking about a piece that you're finishing. Don't be afraid to have a conversation with yourself. Um, I, I say this tentatively because you know I don't want you to get into these, um, these habits that actually distract you from actually physically painting, but take some notes, time yourself, give yourself a minute to literally like, set a timer. I'm not kidding. Um, especially if you are a, a planner. I had that video. Did y'all watch that video? Let me know in comments. Did you watch the video about the different types of creative procrastinators? Remember the collector, the swatcher, the organizer, the planner, right? So if you have a tendency to be an over planner, definitely set that timer for this. But take a look at your piece. Take some notes. Just brain dump those notes, right? Um, thank you, Cheryl, for being here. I'm so glad you're finding this helpful. I am. And remember, friends, Jay Wall's a planner. Yeah, I know. I know. We, I got a little bit of all of them in me. That's why I watched that video. I am going to link that video below if you want to figure out what type of creative procrastinator you are. You are. Um, thank you so much, Toby. I appreciate it so much. Hey, Judy. Nice to see you. So um, have a conversation with yourself. Take a minute of notes. Ask yourself about the composition in general. Things like balance. Um, is your eye going somewhere that you don't want it to go? Color theory. So let's look at this piece. I'm having a hard time. I think it was, this was the original orientation. Goodness gracious. This was a painting inspired by um, the movie Emma. Um, the most recent movie, Emma. I think it was Emma. Um, I will link that below as well. I've got a lot of links to add after this live. Um, and hey, if you're on Team Replay, go ahead and head into comments. And let us know. Team Replay, yay! And uh, get involved in the conversation. So this piece, actually, there's this piece is um, working beautifully. It's got beautiful balance. I'm pleased with it. Uh, really, I'm, I'm running through balance. Is my eye going somewhere I don't want it to? The color, do I need more color somewhere? And all of the... All the boxes are being checked. We're good, we're good, we're good. The only thing is that it's still floating. So I want to figure out some places to take elements off the page. I think this is another good one for today. I'm gonna to put it in the, let's try to work it out today pile. Here's a great one, like baffled. I like this piece, super fun, but what in the heck do I do with it? It's an all over pattern, number one. Um, my instinct is telling me just continue off the page. Let it be what it is. What it wants to be is an all over pattern. Don't try to fight it at this point and turn it into some like bouquet because you're just going to be fighting a battle. That's the other thing. Um, two things, actually, friends. When you are thinking about edits in your final stages of a painting and you are, you're just, maybe you're frustrated with the fact, maybe you remember a frustration, a residual frustration from a particular piece. And you're like, so badly wish you could change it. But that change may not necessarily be viable, might not be doable, right? So um, just keep that in mind. Start a new painting if that's really where your brain's at. Don't try to force the existing painting into something it can't be or it can't be easily. Um, uh, you can't remember that video. Oh, <laughs> 
Um, thank you, Mandy. You're so sweet. I'm so glad you're all here. Ronnie, it's okay. Better late than never. All right. So I'm just going to go through a couple more and then we're going to get to painting. I promise. I promise. Um, let me see here. Um, materials. Thinking about materials, this piece, I actually, this piece made an appearance in two videos. This was, um, uh, a rose that I had kind of bent the petals back and created this most beautiful, um, uh, it's a florist trick with roses. My nose is itching. I don't know what's happening. I'm sorry. Um, of course I'm live and my nose is itching like madness. Uh, so this piece, and then I used it to finish up some thoughts on greenery filler. Right. And, uh, so I used a lot of pencil, obvious pencil. And so another thought can be if you are uh, finishing up a mixed media piece, do I need more of a certain medium here, less over here? Um, so the balance question can come into play with your materials as well as actual placement of additional elements and color theory. So um, I'm going to put that one in the, actually this one. Okay, talking to myself. I have yet to decide truly if this one is going to get released i put her in the pile because i know a lot of you loved her the poppies but i don't know if i can part with her so i'm just going to put her over here my friend i don't know <laughs> all right this is an older piece of mine i did not work on this 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 year this was done during uh, Dahlia season one year, and I had this dinner plate beauty bad boy. Oh my gosh. Um, and I know I love the poppy. She's my love. Uh, thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Done. <laughs> oh man, I like that one too. Um, Rosanna, Rosanna um, wish I had you as a professor in college. Oh my gosh, what a compliment. Thank you. Um, so again, a nine by 13. She's a big, big, big one. Um, lot going on here and, um, it's hard. Um, let me actually go. All right. Now you can see the whole piece. Um, this piece needs some, needs some work. She's definitely confused about, um, uh, focal point. Um, there are, this is a great place for me to add that you could also consider cutting a piece. I could make easily make two pieces out of this. I don't know if that's really the direction I would go in, but it's certainly a consideration for you as you're thinking through um, of wrapping up particular paintings. <laughs> I don't like dahlias and I don't like yellow. <laughs> um, the pencil doesn't bother me, which is good because I end up with a lot on my paper. Yeah. Um, the pencil never bothers me. The Pencil lines have become a part of my style. I love it. So, um, so think about edits where not only, you know, adding more detail, adding more, you know, balancing color, but could you cut a piece down um, and really make it incredibly strong by doing so? Let's actually look at that realistically. Um, so this piece could be cut right there. That could just, that little bit of yellow petal could become a leaf. And we could work out another pink moment up here and maybe another pink little something peeking back here or even here. And you've got a beautiful piece, additional composition. And then easily again, if you made that cut, this is what you'd be left with. I love this peach moment happening here. I have no idea where my brain was when I did that, but you can continue some of the peach up here and let it curve around. Definitely more peach down here. I've got hints of it in the greenery. So I don't know. Maybe I do want to trim this one. Who knows? All right. Who would be in favor of seeing this one cut and then making two paintings at it? Let me know. Um, head into comments and say cut or don't cut. I, I want to I wanna know I, I, because I feel like this could be a really powerful lesson if we were to cut it. I, I'm curious. Super curious. Um. I like making it two paintings. It doesn't feel cohesive to me. Yeah, I know. There's so many beautiful moments in that piece, but there's a lot of like, there's there's a lot of um, lot going on in that piece, right? Okay, I'm gonna work on this piece first. 
this little top heavy situation going on here. And I'm just gonna make some space. This one was done with my Art for Joy Sake palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out and get her sprayed down. I think cut, it feels lopsided, although pretty. Yeah, cut, yeah, cut for the learning value. I know, cut, cut, everybody wants it cut. Do not cut. Okay, Ariana, Ariane says do not cut. Sorry, I mispronounced. I think cutting it in two pieces would be great too. Ah, uh, yeah, I think we're gonna have to cut that one. All right, let's get this palette sprayed down. Keep those questions coming. I am just going to paint and I'm going to talk through my compositional decisions as I do that. If I think that would be helpful, um, but keep your questions coming. Obviously I'm going to be painting, so I'm going to be looking down, but I'm gonna do my very, very best to keep looking up for questions. So I, I, I'm really pleased with the piece as it stands now. I'm undecided about if I'm gonna fill the whole page, right? Undecided, but that's okay. You don't have to make those dec decisions right now. You can, but you don't have to. Really valuable lesson to learn. Um, I have a video about that, about you know making decisions incrementally as you go, instead of planning everything out ahead of time it can be really informative. Um, so cut if you like, interesting either way. Joanna says, do you keep notes about color palettes for future working? Um, I honestly, Joanna, I don't. I'm not that much of a planner. Um, I tend to be, I will get something in my head about a color palette that I'm like really focused on or I wanna try again. Maybe something didn't work. And you'll see me, you know, I will then just go and explore that in a new painting, but to make notes, I'm just much more likely to get some strokes down on paper um, and, and start a piece and leave it very unfinished. Those are kind of my way of making notes, if that makes sense. So maybe I do take notes just um, in a painting, you know, visually. All right. I love the strength of this spray, but it felt a little blocky coming down here. So I'm going to carry some up little just a little bit upwards i'm going to go ahead i'm rinsing my brush i'm going to grab some of that olive green i'm going to get my liner brush though because these lines are really thin and i really liked that and we're going to go ahead and just run that through i want to get a sense of what i'm hoping will happen here is going to happen and it's a little more blue than the original, so I'll probably go in here and add a few moments just to carry it through so that blue isn't startling over here, right? I'm going to go in and strengthen some of these. All right, taking a step back. I like that decision. It doesn't fully solve the blockiness here, but I'm not going to continue to add more yet because there's other things that I might be able to do down here that will solve this blockiness. I'm gonna go grab my three quarter inch flat wash brush. This is the Unshakable Joy brush for my brush collection, friends. I do have links to my brushes, to my palette in the description below if you are interested. I don't have anyone helping me today, so I won't be able to pop up those fun you know, QR codes like I normally do. Um, is it difficult to, it's a great question, is it difficult to recognize the colors you work with and to recreate the same vibes? Um, no, typically no. I have a very good memory what palettes I used. It's just become a, an instinct of mine. Um, I typically work with a very limited palette and I also don't do a lot of mixing on the palette. So I find because of that, I'm able to recreate a color vibe pretty easily. Um, so that's a, a fantastic question, though, I'll be honest. Um, but if that is a worry of yours, you know, if that is, and I'm just, you know, I'm just speaking off the cuff here. Maybe it's not a worry of yours at all, but I want to address it because I think it could be valuable for some watching. If you are like, I've got to finish this painting because I don't know if I'll ever mix this color properly again or whatever the case may be. Um, try to let that worry go. You can make some notes, remind yourself if you have multiple palettes, what palette did you use, but don't get caught up, you know, don't force yourself to continue on a piece where you might be feeling a little 
creative fatigue with that piece just because you think you're going to forget or not be able to get the vibe back. Um, that is not something that I struggled with, even as a young artist. I don't feel like that was ever a, a true, a big struggle for me. Um, I need a third leaf here, but not a huge one. All right, we're going to go in there. Just dab in a little bit. Okay, I like that. So I felt like I wanted to add some leaves here to almost make it look like a spray, like a bouquet of sorts. Um, so glad I did that and just a little bit of this color. Okay, I'm, this is a color decision, not as much of a compositional one. And um, my brain, I am literally in really heavy thinking mode here. So if I'm finding it difficult to talk, that's why. I usually don't have that problem, but you know, there's a first time for everything. Here we go. I'm getting in some more of these leaves. I felt like I needed uh, um, that, but I wanted, I'm trying to put into words my decision here. I want more of this green. I want fullness. I do feel like I want to fill out this page, but I still want this, this area to be my focal point. So I'm trying to add big strokes, but very, very loose strokes um, to accomplish that, to keep this maintained as the focal point. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm doing a press and lift to create kind of with the straight edge of this perpendicular to the page just to press and lift over and over again to create a sense of some um, uh, branches vines whatever you want to call it love that all right i'm going to continue with this green story because i actually think this is a lovely way to fill up this area but without making it um overly detailed. I really, I grabbed this same emerald green that appeared in the original composition and I watered it down quite a lot. As you can see, my brush is just barely damp with that color. And look at that. I'm, I'm pleased with that decision so far, so far. Letting that run out. Oh yeah, I'm pleased with that. Let me answer some questions. What you're doing looks good. Um, I just plain don't like that top flower. Okay. The shape reminds me of a snail. This one, a snail. Interesting. Okay. Um, yes, I, I typically don't use metallics. I'm sorry. I'm missing questions, friends. I don't use metallics because I scan so much of my artwork and metallics do not scan well. Um, they create some really weird textures that, um, are difficult if you're editing a piece digitally, um, or using it for reproduction. Yeah. All right. Ah, okay. How about adding a small flower on the right of the large flower? Yeah, I am I'm being very tentative about what I do up here right now. Um, for, for a variety of reasons. And because again, I'm making these, a lot of decisions incrementally. Um, but I do, that is kind of where my brain is headed. I do want to add some more, some more floral elements. Um, I'm just trying to resolve some of this up here. So I mixed a little bit of that emerald with a little bit of brown on my Art for Joy's Sake palette. And I'm going up here and I'm curving and I'm starting to go off the page. Again, very light, very watered down. Different shaped leaves though. These are longer cascading. They look almost serpentine. Um, Roxanne, I'm so glad you're here. I'm looking through questions. Sorry, sorry friends. <laughs> I think the top flower looks like a seashell. Cool getting inspired good vibes i'm glad kim yeah i don't paint roses like anybody else um paints roses so you know i'm glad you're seeing all these interesting things <laughs> in my painting um super fun i completely lost track of what i was saying i am so in my my creative brain 
I, my, my, uh, my verbal skills are escaping me. Very, very interesting. Um, what happens to our brain when we, when we get in that zone, right? Very interesting. Mm, I don't like what I did there. So I'm going to blend it out and actually maybe have a happy accident. We'll see. I have an idea. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna leave that like that for now. Let that go. Maybe add a little bit of that emerald, wet on wet. I'm gonna really blend this out into nothingness. Okay, that there. All right. Um, Judy says, I am painting, went to pick up my water glass, to take a drink, and almost drank from my rinsing water. I drink from my rinsing water all the time. I think the emerald helps to complete it. Tough crowd, just let the girl create. Um, happy accents are how I roll. Yes. Um, vintage vibe from this painting. Great. I got the Mozart palette that you recommended. Holy guacamole, Batman. I love it. Isn't it great? It's a fantastic palette. It's a fantastic palette. See, I don't always rec just only recommend my own palette. I promise. I have this complex. I always think that people are going to just think I only recommend my palette. And I don't. I don't. I don't only recommend my palette. <laughs> All right. I'm going up and up in here, even though I'm nervous about it. Mm. I love this leaf too. And I think I want to bring some more pink and, and olive leaves. Um, this paper, yes, is Arches 100% cotton. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh-huh. I'm going to make another bloom here. I've got some medium pink on my brush. and I'm going right in with the peach on um, a dirty brush. It's not dirty, but I didn't rinse it from the pink. And just creating... Um, some simple strokes that I'm planning to not embellish compared to these that are embellished. I'm going to add this bloom just with some simple C curves and let it be more simple and unfussed with just one layer and we'll see how that feels. Okay, that is fun. I'm going to get down with that. I'm going to actually add another little cluster. Maybe we'll do almost like a cluster of spray roses. Maybe, maybe. And yeah. All right. And I'm going to keep getting a little smaller as I add these. Peach. I'm just going back and forth between the peach and that medium pink here right on my mixing tray. And then maybe just a few little hints of like buds. Remember friends, you don't have to have this all planned out. If that, if the planning piece of it gives you joy, then by all means plan it. But if you find that you get stuck and tangled up in that planning process, try to pull yourself out of it, right? We are joy seekers. We are after what brings us that joy, what brings us that rush of what, what do we, whatever we want to call it. Is it adrenaline? I don't know. But we are after whatever that you were very familiar with that feeling. I hope that if you are here, you've at least had that joy feeling once in your painting journey, right? And we are after, we are seeking that more than once. We want to seek a lot of that. And so if there is part of your process, part of your habit, you know, if you have habits that prevent that joy, I want you to take a hard, critical look at them. All right, I'm adding some more of the ghost-like, you know, muted emerald green in here to see how I feel about it. Not, I'm liking that. It's strokes that make it look like a snail or a shell. 
Um, I love the peach in my palette too. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Jay Wall says, you have the light emerald on one side, would you? Yes, I'm actually thinking about, but this area is still damp. So I'm thinking about continuing a cascade of the emerald, like a spray out here. Just, just one to start to see how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm also, while other things are drying and while I'm giving my brain time to process the changes I've made, that's another thing, friends, I talk about this a lot. Give yourself time to process what you've done before you start making big changes to an area. So I'm processing the greens. I'm processing how I feel about the spray rose cluster. But I do know I want to carry some of this filler somewhere else. And right now I'm feeling like a little moment up here makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to go for it. I'm using my half inch dagger. Um, she's the forget rules brush. going right over. Now this area is still damp up here, but I'm okay with that. But I am going to wait to add the linear moments. Um, that's a little straight. That that collection of strokes feels a little too rigid compared to these, but I'm going to wait to make a decision on that before I add more to make it look more curved until I get these linear moments in. So you really have to train yourself to sit in uncomfortable moments in your work let them be uncomfortable because you might, if you make a decision in an uncomfortable or an ugly moment in your painting, you might make a decision that really doesn't benefit your painting fully, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. So be okay with sitting in those uncomfortable moments. I'm going to be okay with this looking like a snail to some of you or a seashell <laughs> because I'm sensitive about my roses. Um, and I'm going to sit in that. I'm going to sit in the fact that I'm uncomfortable with the straightness this cluster is taking on visually because I need to make decisions elsewhere first. I want to make informed decisions and not emotional decisions all the time, in my opinions. Yeah. Um, thank you, Rodin, for, uh, says, I love the pink bleed in the green top right. I do too, actually. That was a little happy accident. Learning when to stop is hard. It is so hard. Yes, yes, it is hard. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I think I might be able to go do that emerald situation that someone mentioned so brilliantly because that definitely needs to happen. All right. I do remember that some of this emerald, even though it's dry brush, which I love, was added in a damp area. So we'll see if what I'm going to do here feels too strong. Go right over top, press, drag, and lift, short drag. The drag is only about, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch drag. And my bra, I'm definitely, I don't have a dry brush situation going on here. I think I'm okay with it. I'm getting smaller as I go. That's weird. That was a weird shape. It's okay. Make her a little pointy here. Um, a little small one here. Here. That's fun. I like that. Ooh, I do. I do. I do care for that. I do care for that. I like it. I like it a lot. Adding just some hints. Sometimes you don't need a lot of, so, okay, let's back up. This is a color theory kind of, this is kind of a color theory decision we're making here about this composition, but know that Sometimes you don't, you know, if you feel like a painting needs more of a color in an area to balance things out, right? Whether it's compositionally or for color theory, it, they're one and the same in a, in a compositional conversation, but um, you don't have to add a lot necessarily. Go slowly, be tentative. This is the time. This is the time. The end of the painting is a time to not question yourself to the point that you are frozen and you can't make decisions, but to go slow and to not do too much too quick, right? All right, cool. I'm going to do a little more detail because this is my focal point and I'm still standing strong in that being the focal point. And what is happening here? The eye seems to start right here. And then it's rushing right up to this. And then it's coming off the page with the emerald. And that is powerful. That is effective. 
in my humble opinion, I'm happy with what's happening with my eye. If I stop, I never go back because it was ugly. <laughs> Thank you, Miriam. I appreciate that. I'm pleased with that, that emerald move. Miriam, Miriam says that was a good move with the darker color leaves. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do some... Um, I'm going to do some contrast detailing here where I go in and I add just little dabs of color where I eventually want to make some more depth. I rinse my brush and then I stroke that damp brush right next to that color I just added and let it bleed out a little bit. And that adds a little bit of depth, just a little. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that over here because I'm going to extend this petal a little bit. I hope this works the way that I think it will. Go right next door and drag it out. Drag it again. There's a little too much water on there to get the effect that I'm after. I just want a hint of more petal there. There we go. Just a hint. All right. And then I also want, I'm being very tentative here because I wasn't unhappy with this rose. I just felt like she was just a skosh unfinished. And you know, friends, sometimes we can't put a finger on why we are feeling a certain way about part of the painting. I don't know why I felt she was unfinished. Um, not enough depth perhaps, but you don't have to fully identify the whys in a painting. You just have to sometimes listen to that instinct and find a solution for what you're seeing and what you're feeling. But you don't have to think about you don't or you don't have to talk to yourself about it. You don't have to plan your way out of it. You have to try your way out of it. And that's why going slow in these stages of the painting is so important because you can think through a problem on the paper. There's nothing wrong with that. Not every solution has to be planned out. The strategy doesn't have to be planned. You can move slowly, methodically, carefully through a painting and let the painting and the experience of it be how you strategize. Gosh, that was just very philosophical. And I'm going to stop now, but I stand behind what I said. Just a little depth there. Just discovered you, a new beginning says, very much enjoying your tutorial. You are so talented. Thank you so much. Because I didn't like, no, I, I, I am, uh, I struggle with seashells too. I'm, I'm, I'm staying in my comfort zone here a little bit. I got to be honest. I got to be honest. But no, um, uh, oh, I liked what I did there. She is a big rose. She's like a dinner plate rose. She's like out of control, but I'm I'm okay with it. I'm 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 going with it. I am feeling like some dry brush here might be really effective because there's some really strong dry brush down here in the emerald. Loving it with the added depth. Thank you, Susie. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go be brave. I dried out my brush. I've added some of this fuchsia from my palette. I'm, I'm gonna be brave, friends. I'm gonna be brave right now. Mm-hmm. Come on, Christy Rice. <gasps> yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk yourself through it. After each stroke, I'm pulling back. I'm evaluating, but not for too long. I'm happy. I don't know if I'm finished, but right now I'm happy. I'm going to move away from this area. Moving away from this area. These are such important important habits to build in your painting. If you really want to step outside the beginner zone, and I don't know where any of you are specifically, I don't know where you are, but I assume many of you are still on the beginner bus. If you feel like you really want to make progress and move past whatever that beginner means, and I have a video coming up where we talk about when you are, when do you know you're not a beginner anymore? Because it's such an interesting question. But if you, let's just get beginner, moderate, intermediate, expert out of the way. If you want to really progress, you've got to build habits like these. And I'm still building these habits. 
You've got to build habits where you're able to slowly make decisions based on what you're seeing, not what you're feeling. I'm feeling anxiety. I'm still loving this painting. I really don't want to screw her up. I really don't. But I'm keeping that at bay. All right. I'm also keeping the, the urge to add linear detail at bay here because I like her just as she is. She doesn't need linear detail. Linear detail doesn't need to happen everywhere in a painting. Christy Rice. So, <laughs> okay, you just heard a little bit of the mess inside my brain. How was that? <laughs> I really need Kelly here. She keeps me in check. She sends me texts. She'll say like, stop babbling or, you know, no, no, she won't. But something along those lines. I don't have Kelly today, so I'm... I'm not in check. All right. Remember earlier, I was really undecided about how straight this looked. But I decided that, and I'm sorry, friends, the sun is shifting. I just bumped my, my table with my, my video equipment. So I'm sorry for um, all the movement and all the change in light. But, you know, it is what it is. So... Remember I said I was really unsure about how straight that looked, but I was going to be good and I was going to wait and I was going to wait until I added that linear detail. Lo and behold, I'm happy that I did because um, the linear detail really helped it look more curved. So, good. Is the middle leaf painted in gold? It is not. This one, I know it's no, it's my olive mixed with some fluorescent yellow, no shimmer whatsoever, but I'm glad you addressed this leaf because now, now has anyone noticed this? Um, <laughs> I'm here for you. <laughs> Thank you. No split seats. Um, have you noticed this leaf now your eye is going to it for, for a variety of reasons. One of the main reasons being that it's create this is like an orange and this color is nowhere else in the composition composition at this point, but we've got to change that because my eye keeps going right there. Now, all of these changes I made, I'm happy with, but now my eye, your painting is a living, breathing thing. Um, oh geez. The bunny has a mustache. Where is there a bunny in my painting? I swear I'm the queen of like, Hidden Mickeys. My painting, everybody's always calling out hidden Mickeys in my paintings. It's hysterical. Um, Susie, I also love the magic in watercoloring, but watercolor is living, breathing. I, I'm, I, I, I stand behind that. It is the one medium that just keeps changing uh, on paper. And um, it, the way the light hits an area, the way, um, you know, when you start adding more details in one color, it makes another area that wasn't noticeable before noticeable. Um, yes, Jay Wall says, I think you can progress in one thing that you paint and not in others. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There, that's why the whole beginner, the categorization is problematic um, because your progress as an artist is never linear. Um, never never linear. All right. I'm going in. It's quite red. And I'm going to, this is a bold move. This is a bold move friends, but I'm, I'm here for it. Um, it's also helpful friends. Remember, get up and away from your piece. I actually have a monitor here that I can see what I'm doing, um, from a top down view. And it's really cool. Um, so get up and away and give yourself that opportunity to see what's going on from a distance. It can be extremely, extremely helpful. All right. That flat or that leaf that was really popping out started to get distracting all of a sudden had um, this golden all of the color going on. So I'm going to bring some of that into this filler here, not all over, just in areas and see if that 
helps bring the focal point back to this. And it's getting there. It's getting there. The progress absolutely goes backward and forward. Yes. Love that move. Um, I just bought the peony blanket yesterday. Oh my gosh. Yay. I saw that order come through. I have to tell you friends, I still do a happy dance. Every time an order comes through, I see them on Amazon for the brushes and the palettes. You have no idea. Like the orders from ChristyRice.com. Literally, I see them all and they give me, it's like I get, it's like getting a boop. So I appreciate it because every order is supporting my team. Friends, don't forget, um, if you're interested in an ornament, I'm having a sale just today. I am just announcing this to my YouTube community, special for you, J-O-Y capital, J-O-Y number one. J-O-Y number one, use that code and you're gonna get 30% off any of the ornaments that are still available that I painted this week. So go ahead and take a looky loo. Um, love the combo of the emerald leaves and the coral. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Friends, this live is just getting more populated as the afternoon goes on, which is fun. Normally people drop off and we have seen an increase. So that's super fun. That means your boops are working and I appreciate it. If you're just coming on, thank you for joining us. Um, if you're new, Joy1, yes, thank you for putting, that's the discount code for the ornaments, Joy1, 30% off. Um, if you're new here or you're just joining us, my name's Christy Rice. I am ridiculously obsessed with watercolor and the creative lifestyle. And we are talking about how to finish a painting today. This was a painting that I began months ago. I left it go. We're talking about the fear that comes with that. We're talking about um, how to slowly work through a painting and make decisions um, in increments so that we have time to react to things that we might do that we don't like, that we wanna change as we navigate through a painting. I'm just adding some um, veins here to this little peach leaf that was here from the get-go. Just to add a, another little skosh of that orange, I'm trying to pull the focus off of this bright orange leaf that I love. I love the look of her, um, but I, 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 she's pulling away from my focal point. So I'm actually gonna go and add some of this orange and warm up some of the glistening white areas of this rose up here right now. Again, with just some broad strokes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm loving this. This is helping. We're still, we're still not fully resolved here, but it's okay. We'll get there. I feel confident that we will get there. I need some more of that goldeny orangey moment here. So I'm mixing it up with the red from my palette, the fluorescent yellow from my palette. I'm going to go ahead and add some of this yellowy olive green. Would you believe that that olive green made that orange mixture like more of a classic, bold, primary orange? I know this palette, friends, is like, it's, it's, it's like a chameleon. You never know what it's going to do. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. I feel like I want to pull over the mixing chart. I have this massive mixing chart. I'm going to pop that video below for anyone watching on the replay because um, I did this whole project of painting this mixing chart from my palette. And oh my gosh, I was startled. I am not a mixing chart type of gal, but I was like, well, you know, I designed a palette. I'm picking out these colors. I best do a mixing chart just so I can see the full scope of what I've designed. And when I did, I was just like blown away. I couldn't believe all the colors. Maybe I need to go grab it. Anywho, yeah, you know what? Okay, this is working. I'm pleased with this, but I'm still, my eye is still going here, but I have an idea. I'm going to go grab that, um, that mixing chart. I want you to see it if you haven't seen it. All right, friends. Cheap be at she be it. All right, this is the Art for Joy Safe palette. All right, here, let me get this in view. And this is everything just that you can mix from her. I, I can't see what I'm doing. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that insane? I just, I, it still blows me away. Anyhow, um, 
I'm not a mixing chart swatching type of gal, but let me tell you what, it's definitely a beneficial tool when you pick up a new palette. It's, there's nothing, there's nothing that can deny that fact. You just don't want to get in that tailspin of constantly doing mixing charts if, if it's not bringing you joy and it's not getting to you to where you want to be in your art journey. Love listening to your thought process. Thanks, Jessica. So helpful. The painting's looking great. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, that orange is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I nod and answer you out loud and replay all the time. I'm so glad. Speaking of replay, if you are here as part of Team Replay, head into comments and let us know that you're here. Um, and by us, I mean me and my team because we'll be the one reading your comments. So, so glad you're here. Um, and I am just taking a mental, mental break. I'm going to tell you where I'm, what I'm thinking. This is also so important in finishing a painting, friends. So important to take a break. Finishing a painting is intense. Finishing a painting is intense. There's a lot of thinking that goes on, right? So now's a great time to take a moment, take a beat, and think about what I'm going to do next. What I am thinking to tone down the eye, the problem of the eye going here too much. I want to add some greenery over top. This is an old, the original part of the painting, old part of the painting. It's dry. It is not, I'm not going to get a lot of like reconstitution of the pigments underneath. That's not going to happen easily. But my first thought was the emerald, but I think that's going to be too much emerald. So I'm going to go in there with this medium olive. Not quite as dark as this, kind of in this, this realm. And just do some glazing of some really pretty smaller leaves over top. I'm going to see how it works. I'm going to see if it works. I'm going to answer a few questions. Talk to the videos all the time too, Judy says. Um... Wanting the palette for so long broke dairy farmer here. Um, well, keep uh, popping into our lives the next uh, week and a half because we're going to keep giving away stuff. So, and thank you for all you do uh, as a farmer. That's that's incredible. Um, I'm going back to comments here. You had a great bit of what you did with the fluorescent yellow. Yes, yes, the fluorescent blows my mind. And yes, fluorescents aren't as light fast, but again, like I do with the originals that I use fluorescent in, you just use a UV fixative. And if you are selling your pieces, just recommend that people use a UV uh, glass. It's good to go. Um, the small little yellowish leaves on the center bottom almost make the shape of a round face. Nice. Joanna says, I'm working on my ornaments along with you. And oh my God, you are helping me relax and be brave. I'm loving my florals and they aren't my normal thing. Wonderful to hear. All right. Love that. We're going to head back to the painting and I'm going to try out my little idea here and see how it works. I am going to use, I'm going to use my cat's tongue. Um, I'm just debating what size cat's tongue to you. So let's, I'm going to share with you why I'm debating. Another thing that I look at is the size of the brush strokes overall in the painting, especially with this type of painting. This is a loose watercolor, a more modern watercolor, not a realistic watercolor. So a lot of the, the strokes are like one stroke, press and lift or press drag and lift. And so the size and the shape and the scale of the petals can actually be something to consider in your composition. So I've got big, big long strokes up here, right? More big long strokes here and here. I've got these kind of like medium sized press and lift strokes. I don't have any real, I have some tinier strokes, some down here, yeah, a little bit there, but that's it. So I am going to use um, my, um, my number one cat's tongue. And this is the watercolor curious brush from my brush collection. All the supply links are below in the description. And I'm going to go ahead and grab that medium, that medium olive. It's the one right here in my palette. And I'm going to just do some press and lifts. And remember, this is glazing. So, um, and I'm not using a juicy, I'm not loading juicy color onto the brush, meaning a lot, a lot more paint it's it's more sheer and I'm just doing a press and a lift and I'm dabbing in to just get a little more coverage I could just get a little more pigment on my brush 
I'm going to go down here and I'm starting to talk quieter because I'm in my creative brain. <laughs> and we're going to see if this is like the final icing on the cake of solving this orange composition issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm here for it. I'm going to um, not add more leaves. I'm going to, because I'm, I'm liking that, but remember, sometimes too much of a good thing is too much. And instead, I'm going to go in with the same green and just add some of these little linear um, stems to see if that is enough of an addition instead of adding more heavier, visually heavier leaves. I'm going to turn that into a leaf because that got way too thick. All right, I'm gonna notch out. I'm gonna take this opportunity to just notch out a little bit of that rose up there to give it just a skosh more detail. But again, fighting the urge to put linear, actual linear detail in that rose, but ooh, that notching out of that area just to find the silhouette of that petal. And I'm gonna do a little bit more of that over here. And oof. I feel like that really did it. What do we think? What do we think, team? Yeah, as a as a par as you Paris, um, fluorescent in in work is 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 um, it's like a habit you have to build. You have to get comfortable with because it can do remarkable things and not look fluorescent at all, which I love. Um, I bought Arches Cold Press. It's terrible. Thought I was buying. Um. Did you buy the arches pad or the arches block? Boom, chef kiss. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Thank you, Rodin. Thank you so much. Nose bleed seats. Yeah, that did it. So I'm going to stay away from that area for sure because it's working. It's working, y'all. All right. I'm going to, what do I want to do here? I'm going to put this one aside. I feel like my brain needs a break. And we're going to do another one of these um, how to finish your painting sessions. Um, just a little housekeeping for the lives coming up. And if you are watching this on replay, you're going to see a full list of this whole series in the description below. So you can watch right along with us all. All right. So uh, next week, uh, Monday, we're doing some ornaments. I think we're going to do more of the painting finishing. Um, Tuesday, friends, is a celebration. I'll give you a little bit of a preview. Tuesday is the official launch date of my new book, Mixed Media Adventures. Friends, um, the book, some of you already received yours. There was really strange snafus with the launch of this book. Um, it has already started shipping. It's been shipping for like over a week. But we, um, as a decision with my publisher, held fast to the November 22nd publication release date. And so Tuesday, we're going to be celebrating. We're going to be painting in here. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take you on a tour of the book. And we're going to just have fun. We're going to do giveaways. Of course, we're going to give away some books. Um, who knows? Maybe we'll give away an ornament. Probably give away a palette. I just love giving things away. Um, thank you, Madeline. Thank you. Um, I'm sure the book is coming to Europe. I'm sure it is. Um, I know they uh, work with three or four different book di distributors in um, in Europe. So it's coming. It's uh, the, the supply chain with the publishing industry has been highly impacted like so many other things. Um, yeah, I'm so excited. Does anybody have the book yet? I'm just curious. Anybody have the book? If you're watching on Team Replay, if you have it and you've been working in it, let, let us know what you like. Um, what your favorite page is. I want to hear it. So super excited about the book. Yeah, definitely. It's a fun one. Um, okay. I'm going to set her aside. I'm going to just do a couple of minutes on this piece because remember when I was talking through this piece, I felt like she was very well, very well on her way. Um, I'm trying to remember what palette. I think I did this with, oh, I know what palette this is. See, see how that, I have just an insane memory. This was case for making. 
I have not used my case for making palette in ages. I'm going to put my beloved over there. And I'm going to spray her down. This case for making incredible company. Um, I think it's Seattle. And their, uh, they were one of my inspirations for my own palette. Their, their watercolor, their handmade, hand mold, uh, mold paints. Um, and their paints um, are tend on the more opaque side. And so they were one of my inspirations. Okay. I, in general, am happy with the composition. In general, I don't want to make any big changes. But I do want to resolve the floating composition issue. First instinct is to go in here and to continue. I really, because this is my focal point. So to make this stronger and to really continue the eye up here, some really light continuation of these kind of shapes here. So that is where I'm going to go. That's a little brown. See, it's going to take me a moment to remember what I did here. Just going to continue some of these cascading um, berry bud, you know, transitional shapes, but light, right? And just an extra dab. That's almost, I'm not going to do that in, in the others. So I'm going to actually blend some of that out because I want these to stay light. Okay. Made that decision. I'm just thinking through. Um, I don't want to do anything going off the edge here because then I feel it'll be very top heavy. So we're going to stay away. I'm actually going to add some contrast into this rose because I think that will help it be um, the focal point that it wants to be. So contrast detailing, add in a little stroke. That's too much water on my brush. I'm blotting, pulling it back, and there we go. While that area is wet, you, I'm adding even more, like a little bit of a terracotta and letting it just bleed out. Let it just bleed out. Can you comment on how you keep track of what you use, paper, paint, et cetera? Um, thank you so much, Rodin. Thank you. Thank you for the congratulations also, friends, on the new book. Um, I have an, an insane memory for very few things in my life. What palettes I used is one of them. I, they're like my, my children. And I, it, I, you saw me, I took a moment and I'm like, Oh, what palette did I use? And I can just, I remember this particular purple pigment very, very specifically. And boom, I remember it. And I, I rely on that so heavily, but a great way to keep track of it is just to take notes on the back of the piece. Um, just note what palette you used, um, what paper you used when you start the painting. And that way you feel like you're going to have the freedom to come back to it and not be struggling to remember anything. All right. I'm going to continue, but excellent question. Seriously. I'm going to continue um, adding depth to this. I don't think fluorescent is really what I wanted there. So I'm just going to dab in, rinse, blot my brush after the rinse and go right next door to those little moments of color that I added and blend them out. I'm going to blend them even more but being mindful to leave a little bit of that white against the green here. I think that's powerful. I'm actually really wishing this rose were larger, more of that yellow presence. And I'm going to see how I feel about adding a little bit of this. I can always quickly pull that out. I'm happy with that, but I want to add, once it's dry, I'm going to add some more contrast um, into this area, but I know that I need that to dry in order to get the effect that I'm after. I'm adding just little hints of that bright yellowy orange, that really warm yellow to kind of give the illusion that she's a bigger rose than she actually is. It's going to be really important to add more depth to this area because this is really abstracted here, but I'm confident still in the decision I made to lay down some of that yellow. Um, Roxanne asks, what do you think about watercolor on canvas paper or board? Um, 
I, uh, I love watercolor boards, watercolor canvases. They're not all made equal. I definitely don't. Um, I made the mistake once of going with a generic brand that I had never heard of before and it was terrible. So I stick with like, um, um, the known brands of canvas. Um, there is a company out there. I think it's called Artboard. They make a really good watercolor board. Um, well, welcome, Jan. We're glad you're here. I see somebody asking, um, I watched another YouTuber shouldn't have, but oh, well, question. I see somebody asking about stretching. Dawn says, wanted to thank you for your channel is how I found that I love to paint, never painted before your videos. Oh, Dawn, that's wonderful. I love, love hearing that. Well, anyway, I saw some somebody mention something about um, stretching. I do not stretch my paper. Uh, wrinkled paper as I'm working does not bother me. I often work on a block, so I get very little rippling in my paper. So it's just never anything I worried about. Nothing wrong with stretching, but um, it's just not my thing. Um, all right. Okay. Stepping back. Well, leaning back. What do I want to do? You run the risk with a piece like this. Like if I went off here and then here and also here, it's going to just start to look like a star almost. And that I think would be awkward. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm, I'm actually a little undecided about what I'm going to do here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm looking at mm, this dark detailing here. I'm going to do a little something, something with that over here, but very little. I'm going to go slowly. Maybe actually right here, press and lift. Press and lift. That's actually too red. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown to that. There we go. It's okay though. It doesn't bother me, the redness of it. It still works. All right, I'm gonna go off the page with that, but almost like misshapen dots as I go off the page. Remember, we don't need to go off the page with heavy strokes or with large strokes to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish compositionally. Just like we don't need to make big strokes all the time if we're adding a color for balance. We can make small, thin, tiny, delicate marks and accomplish the same thing. And that, I think, we're on our way. This isn't finished, but we're on our way. And I kind of think I accomplished something I was hoping to. A few small dots going off right here. Now I'm starting to get a little carried away, getting nervous that I did too much, but I think we're still in the okay zone. All right, stopping. I'm stopping regardless of what I'm seeing here because I need to take a break before I get too cray cray over there. All right, but I like that. It's almost looking like that rose now is being uplifted and supported more by the greenery and the detail under it. Um, just a little, I know, I'm totally going to be spattering. I, I'm totally, because there's a little here and there's a little here. Well, okay, I, let's just say this. I'm not going to try to cover the spatter that's there. I think the spatter that's there is super important, but I may be adding more, but I'm totally not sure yet. <laughs> I know there's a lot of thoughts about some people absolutely love spatter. Some people are like, never, ever, no, hate it. Um, I'm a spatter gal. Little bit of that down here. Friends, don't forget about your joy one. If someone wants to pop that code joy one, if you are watching live is going to give you a discount code for the ornaments that I have painted to this point this week that are still available 30% off. Use that code on christyrice.com, joy1. All right. Okay, I have another idea. We're gonna see if it works. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, but we're gonna try it. And actually, I feel like I might've used a little bit of the Art for Joy Safe palette on this one. Yeah, I think I did. So I'm gonna add a few 
mimicking this area, but not with the full detail of this area, which you're probably like, Christy, there's no detail in that area, but you'll see what I mean. Mimicking that area, but with just a few strokes, maybe a little hint of the fluorescent pink. That's even too much. Actually, no. No, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. I have an idea. I'm going to keep going with it. I've got this green on this palette. I know I used it in this painting because it's on this palette and it looks very familiar. And I'm going to add some of that green. You see that green all throughout here. I'm going slowly, making sure that this is a good decision. I'm just going to go off the page ever so slightly. And then bring in the liner brush to add some connecting stems and see if it's enough. See friends, finishing a painting doesn't have to be stressful. It's deliciously in intense. It's always gonna be intense to, to try to complete a painting, but it doesn't have to be stressful if you are mindful enough, if you are, give yourself time to make decisions, give yourself time to, um, Consider what you've just done, what you, what little moments you've just added. Don't rush, and it it becomes not stressful. Okay, I am liking this. I am liking this a lot. Here, let me tell you why. Um, Joy one, thank you for putting that code. Um, so I'm going off the page in three spots. All of the three spots are in the lower half, which keeps it from like looking like a star where it's like everything's going off the page on all quadrants. Good. Love that. Um, things are going off the page in a way that is leaving negative space that is interesting and is helping this composition. Like look at this negative space here, this like long triangle. That is very interesting, right? This is leading the eye back to this, it's starting at a point, it's going off the page in a point, and it's leading the eye here and opening up to the fullness of the main part of the painting here. Love, love, loved it. I'm so glad you're learning from this demo, Madeline. That means the world to me. Friends, let me know what questions you have. We're going to be wrapping up here in a few moments. Remember, everything's going to be supplies, my palettes, my brushes, links in description, all the videos that I mentioned. Just give me a few moments to, <laughs> to get that done after this video processes, and we will do that. But friends, let me know what your questions are. I'm going to let this one sit. Probably going to come back to both of these uh, next week, and we're going to wrap them up. We are going to finish them and see how we feel about them. And these will be made available on ChristyRice.com, along with others I've been working on and finishing um, next week. So the original art is going to start to be made available coming Monday. So uh, friends, this has been such a blast. I'm so honored that you've been here with me for the time. I know we went over time, but so much fun. We take a break tomorrow. We will be back Monday. And until I see you again, friends, I wish you tons of happy painting, joyful painting, joy chasing painting, and I will see you soon and have a wonderful, wonderful few days. Take care.